What's happening, fish and friends? I've got a question for all of you out there. Do you automatically assume that a reel with more bearings is going to be a better reel? For example, is a reel with, say, 12 bearings going to be twice as smooth as a reel with only six? I get this question a lot, and it's something that I've always taken with a grain of salt, because, heck, back in the day, I used reels that only had two and three bearings in them. Nowadays, if I were to tell somebody I was using a reel with only two or three bearings in it at all, they'd think I'm crazy. Debo, that thing must be a piece of junk. Well, the truth is, a baitcaster really only needs a few key bearings, and we'll discuss that today, where those bearings are at in the reel. We'll talk about some of the more expensive bait casters versus the cheaper bait casters and how those bearings really come into play. And finally, we'll cover some of the other pros and cons of having more or fewer bearings in your reel. So let's take a look at where those bearings are at. Luckily, I've got my Lose Speed Spool LFS broken down here so I can show you. I want to start by talking about the anti-reverse bearing, or really it's just a clutch, but whenever you look at the bearing you know, description on a reel and it's got like 6 plus 1, 7 plus 1, the plus 1 is referring to this. So it's not like your standard ball bearing. This is more of, a, I think they call it like a needle or pin bearing, something like that, but it's a shaft that fits over... I guess a sleeve, you would call it, a sleeve that fits over your main shaft like this. So this is where your hand will be, you're cranking it. This goes in here like that. And as you can see, your handle will be here. So what this is doing is allowing your handle to move forward. So this is a right-handed reel. As I'm cranking like this, it allows it to go forward. But when you try to move it backwards, it stops it. It completely stops backward motion on here. That's why they call it the anti-reverse bearing. So that's a very important bearing. That's the plus one when you're looking at the bearings on the reel. That's the first important one. Speaking about that main shaft here, let's remove this. We'll leave the rest of that in place. This is the main shaft. Now this is gonna connect to your frame here. This is the second important bearing. I believe it's this little guy right here. Fits in there and there it is. So that bearing is gonna help support your main shaft when it's on here. This is what's actually attaching to your frame here while you crank. So that's on there and you're cranking this as you spin the handle. It's assisting this main shaft and helping keep a nice smooth rotation on it. As opposed to, you know, if there was nothing here and a bunch of room, this main shaft would have a lot of room to wiggle around in there. Next would be the two or three bearings supporting this, the spool. As soon as you press that thumb bar down, that spool is moving completely free. So there's nothing, you know, touching or stopping this from going. It's just sitting in there spinning. So a big part of how well or fast or smooth that spins is going to depend on the bearings. Now, as I said, there are going to be two or three bearings. You often have a bearing that is on the spool just like this. You can see there will be a bearing there spinning as that's going around. This bearing is helping support it as the spool's doing its old spinny thing. So there's one there. There's gonna be another bearing that goes on the opposite side of your handle. This is the other side plate that you would normally take off on the side. This side plate right here. That pops off and that's gonna be the second bearing that supports your spool. That fits in there and your spool spins on that. And the third bearing that would support the spool is over here. This is a right hand retrieve reel. So this sits just under the spool tension knob. So the spool shaft is going to come through there and that's going to help support that spool shaft as it's rotating. So on this, on just a regular loose speed spool LFS, there's three separate bearings helping support this spool. Now it might sound crazy, but that's it. Those are really the main key bearings in the reel. So that anti-reverse, the two or three bearings that are going to support the spool as it's spinning when you cast. And finally, the bearing that sits under here on your frame underneath your handle drive, the drive shaft bearing. I bet a lot of you are scratching your heads right now trying to do the math in your head and figure out where do all those extra bearings go then? Well, I'm glad you asked. And the first spot is going to be the handle. A lot of the reels that you see on the market that have those really high bearing counts, you know, 11, 12, whatever bearings it is, generally four to six of those are going to be in the handle alone. Take all the bearings out that are in the handle and replace those with some polymer bushings and you've gone from an 11 or 12 bearing reel down to a 6 or 8 bearing reel. If you can see here, I've got the little these little caps, handle knob caps come off. And you can see on the Lose Speed Spool LFS, they have one there and one there. You can kind of see it reflecting in there. So that's two per side. So that's four total bearings in just the handle alone. So is it automatically a bad reel if you see a high bearing count because you know some of them are in the handles? No, absolutely not. Some of them I've, you know, turned and you can certainly tell the difference when you're cranking. You don't want this to be hard and rocky, gritty feeling. So the bearings can certainly help that in the handle. I've tried other reels that use polymer, such as the SLX. There's no bearings in these handles. This is arguably one of the, you know, smoothest reels at the $100 price point. And you really can't tell a difference. So it really depends on the reel and you have to look at the reel as a whole. The next spot is on the worm gear. You may have one or two bearings supporting this. This is that worm gear that's up in front that helps move your line guide back and forth. On this particular worm drive for the loose speed spool, it's got one bearing over here, you can see. On the other side, it's just a plastic or polymer bushing right there. When I've discussed this with people, I have had them ask, well, what, what's the difference? Why use a bearing over a bushing? What's the deal? Well, as you can see here, it's just a little tuber cylinder this is shaped very closely to a bearing a little bit wider of course because it fits in the frame but it's essentially the shape of a bearing 
There are no moving parts on it. It's a solid piece of plastic and the bushing works by allowing whatever it is, whatever it's turning or rotating to move inside of it, just like this. This piece doesn't move at all. It's allowing this worm gear to spin inside of here. Now you compare that to a ball bearing, which is over on this side, and it's a little easier to see when I bring up one of these. A ball bearing has an inner race, so this inner part right here doesn't move. So for example, when this is locked in and something were you know, to have a really tight fit right here and this inner part didn't move, the whole outside part of it, this outside race, and all these little ball bearings inside are gonna move. It's actually better if I show you with this. Again, I've got my trusty chopstick with the bearing stuck on it. Now you can see right here on the inside, that's completely stuck to the chopstick. So this inside piece isn't moving, but when you turn the outside, everything is moving around that. So that's how the bearing works compared to a bushing. You've probably heard of the Concept Z, right? That's, you know, the pretty bright orange reel out there by 13 Fishing. That reel uses no bearings. It's all bushings inside. I believe they say their bushings are made of a space age polymer or something like that, but that's how they've made a reel with zero bearings. They've only used bushings in it. And that's a technology that's been around a long time. This is another one of my old reels, my old man's reel. But if you saw my Ryobi video, the old reels back in the day used to use brass bushings. So it's something that's been around, but it works. The Concept Z is a cool reel, but you know, at $200, it's a little bit more expensive for folks. And that brings me to my next point. Some of the more expensive bait casters versus the cheaper bait casters. And how do those bearings really come into play? Take, for example, my SLX. This is a three plus one bearing reel. And this thing feels good. I've had people tell me that the Corrado K feels even smoother than this, and that's a six plus one bearing reel. So the first important aspect of the more expensive reels is castability. Generally, when you move up to the little bit more expensive reels, you're gonna get better casting distance with a reel like that. Smooth, low friction casts are really gonna benefit from a good high quality bearing but the reel also has to be made of good quality components and good tight tolerances to get that castability. Generally with that more expensive reel, you're also gonna find better tolerances in it, thus leading to that better cast. Now how about that buttery smooth cranking that people talk about, you know, right? Somebody picks it up and they're like, oh man, that thing's like butter. And a lot of people have the misconception that the more bearings you have, the smoother that reel is gonna be. But unfortunately, a lot of how a reel, reel feels, you know, when you're cranking it, is gonna depend on the quality of the gear drives, the level wind in front, make sure that's a good smooth adjustment. And again, that reel has to have good tolerances. You know, you've picked up some of the less expensive reels, you do this with it and you can feel this part moving in and out. You can hear a clicking, you know, kind of a sound to it. It's extremely important to have a good precision cut main gear and pinning inside here to get that good buttery feel. It really does make a huge difference compared to a lot of the just standard OEM regular cut main gears. Now the bearings in a reel like that will help assist and you know help keep everything tight and tolerant and drive that reel and make it feel good but more bearings alone in a cheap bait caster will not make that bait caster feel smoother. It may feel good at first as you crank it, but those lower quality components are gonna wear out quicker and you might only get that good feel for a month or two before you start to feel a difference, you know, clicking, weird sounds, whatever it is. And again, something that people always bring up is the handle bearings. Again, something like this, the SLX, uses bushings inside there, doesn't even have any bearings in the handle. And again, that's a good feeling reel. So you really have to take a look at the reel on all of its parts as a whole, not just the bearing count. Another thing you have to consider in the more expensive reels, that price is also going up because of the materials. You know, once you add a carbon fiber handle, custom knobs like this, this one happens to have a frame out of magnesium, which is more expensive. You know, the different things here, you know, different accents and colors, the line indicator that they've got on here, the little hook keeper deal in front, all those things are gonna also add up to a more expensive bait caster. So you have to look at all of that together. So let's sum all this up and talk about some of the pros and cons to more bearings in the reel. So starting out with the pros, more bearings in a reel can help support it and make it a nice smooth reel. But remember the whole reel has to have good quality components and tolerances in it. Bearings alone will not make that reel smooth. The second thing I want folks to remember is that yes, even reels with a lower bearing count can be good. Take for example, the SLX, a three plus one bearing reel. A lot of those bearings that don't need to be high speed are just replaced with bushings. You can still have a good reel. So don't think that, you know, if you get a good reel, you have to have one that's 10, 11 bearings. Look around, feel them. So what are some of the cons to having more bearings in a reel? Well, the more of these you have in a reel, the more you have to maintain. There's more of a chance to get dirt and have these rust out and need them to be fully cleaned or replaced, which means you have to take the reel apart, try to find all these and get them fixed. Now, the second con to having more bearings in your reel is generally having more bearings are gonna drive up the cost. That's not always the case, but in a lot of the higher priced reels, they're gonna put higher quality bearings in there. Bearings with a higher ABEC rating, and that might help the smoothness and casting ability, but you're gonna pay more for it. 
So I hope that gives you all a better understanding of bearings and how the bearings affect the reel's smoothness, price, and really just overall marketing of a reel. You know, a lot of people that just don't understand it might say that, oh yeah, of course a reel with 12, 13, 14 bearings is going to be better, but there's more to that than just the bearing count. So let me know in the comments below, is bearing count something that you really take into consideration when you're picking up a new reel or is something like price, casting distance, or just holding the reel and feeling it to see how it feels? Are those more important? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. But of course, it is late. I've got to get going to bed. So until next time.